Crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we'll be creating some super easy decor items for your home. Now these pieces are all about texture and I was going for a mix of natural and textured looks on these for an interesting appeal. Now as always, you can customize these into your farmhouse, modern, or even boho style decor as you like. Now for your convenience, I've provided the complete list of supplies and tools that I use to make these projects in the description box below. Now I'm so very excited to share this tutorial with you, but before we start, I have to say hey hey and welcome back to my amazing subscribers and visitors to my channel. Now if you are a new visitor to my channel today and you love to create fun and easy DIY projects on a budget, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button and also click that notification bell so you will be the first to know when a new DIY tutorial is ready to share with you. So now let's jump right into the projects. Now this project is a pedestal bowl centerpiece. Now we're gonna need one garden dish from the Dollar Tree. And we'll need one of these plastic bowls from a two pack set from the Dollar Tree. Now we're gonna start by protecting the work surface and grabbing our two bowls. Now our intention is to bond the two poles, bowls together as shown here. But first we're gonna go ahead and remove those stickers and then you wanna make sure both of your bowls are really clean. So once everything is ready, we're gonna bond these together. Now I'm gonna use my hot glue gun and my hot glue sticks, but you can use E6000 as well if you want a permanent stronger bond. Now I'm only gonna be using hot glue for this DIY, so I'm just gonna apply some to the bottom of the white bowl and place that garden bowl right on top, making sure it's nice and center and press it into place. Now while that dries, just go ahead and sit that off to the side and we're going to start mixing up our paint mixture. So I'm just going to grab a little bowl, my little bag of baking soda, and my white chalk paint. I'm also going to be using some elephant and pavement gray uh, acrylic paints to color my textured paint. So I'm going to start by adding about a couple of tablespoons of that chalk paint and a few spoons of that baking soda. Now our intention here is to go ahead and mix it together and you want your mix to be a little bit thicker than like a cake frosting but it's really up to you how thick you want your texture to be and the thicker it is the more texture you will get. So once it's where you want it I'm going to start adding that lighter gray first which is the elephant gray and I'm going to mix that in. And then I'm gonna add some of the darker gray, which is the pavement gray. And this should tint it to get to the color I'm looking for, which is the cement colored gray color here. And so now our hot glue is nice and dry, so we can start painting the bowl. Now I'm gonna start painting on the inside of the top of the bowl, and I'm just using my chip brush. Now, using the chip brush is very good for this project because those bristles are very uh, coarse, and they will give your paint some really, really good texture. And I am like to work it around in a swirl pattern to make it look more natural. And here is what it will look like when it's all applied. So once we finish the inside, just go ahead and flip it down and we're gonna apply this paint mixture to the outside as well. And we're using that same technique, just using our chip brush going around the edges, creating that texture. And then finally, we're just gonna cover up that pedestal portion, which is the white bowl. Just apply a nice thick layer to that bowl as well, all the way around. And we're just gonna hit that last little spot there and then sit this to the side to completely dry. So now that our bowl is nice and dry, you can, um, we're gonna go ahead and highlight some of that texture to make it stand out a little better. So I'm taking just the smallest little dot of some white acrylic paint and my chip brush. And what I wanna do is just get just a little bit of paint on that brush and go around in that same pattern on the bowl, highlighting all of those ridges and that texture. Now, as you can see, it does stand out a little better. We're gonna do the inside of the bowl and we're gonna do the outside edges of the bowl. Now, this does give it a nice natural and weathered look as well, and I'm really loving it. So now that this is all nice and dry, we can actually start styling it now. You can use some um, little flowers, um, clover flowers, or you can use succulents. It's all up to you. And here is my final project, all decked out with the beautiful succulents. I think it turned out so awesome. Now, I love this greenery paired up with the cement look finish, and the texture looks amazing. And here is a version with those beautiful hop clover flowers, too. So simple, yet so sweet. 
Now you can choose your own way to decorate these bowls to make it a fantastic centerpiece for your space. Now this project is a set of rope and twine balls. Now we're gonna need one three pack of these base balls from the Dollar Tree and these are plastic. And we're gonna need an assortment of rope and twine from the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna start by going ahead and unpackaging all of those base balls. And then I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna start off with my natural cotton rope. So I just wanna cut apart um, that little clasp holding it together and then cut that tape at the end. Now I'm going to be unraveling this into three separate strands. Now, in order for your ends not to get too frayed, I am going to add a piece of tape on each end to avoid this. And then I'm just going to continue to unravel the entire length of the rope until it is all done into three separate pieces. So now I'm going to grab one of the balls and I'm going to start applying my rope. So I like to cut off the end till it's nice and even, apply a little hot glue. I'm just, um, just going to wave it around, cool it down a little bit and twist it in place. Now use some silicone fingers if you like, and I just do this really quick so it doesn't bother me. So I just add a dab of hot glue to the center top of that baseball, and I'm just going to start wrapping it around in a circle and adding hot glue in small sections as I go. Now you wanna continue this all the way around until that rope runs out, and here we are at the very end. So once we reach, reach the end of the rope, we're gonna go ahead and cut that off as well, make sure it's nice and even, add a dab of hot glue to prevent it from fraying, and then we're gonna hot glue that piece into place. So now we're gonna grab our second rope. We're gonna go ahead and finish this off with the hot glue as well. We're gonna butt it up right next to the end, and we're gonna continue wrapping this around. So now that we are at the very end, we're just gonna cut it to fit. Just, we have just a little bit left, so I'm just gonna snip that off. I'm gonna add some hot glue to the end of that rope. And then once we do that, I'm just gonna tuck it into that little space. Now at this time, I did notice I had one of those silicone spatulas from the Dollar Tree. It was sitting there and I just didn't see it, but it worked so well for this project, so I will continue using it. And here is what one of the twine balls looks like. So for the next one, we're going to use some of this tan nautical twine rope. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and tape off the ends and unravel it into the three pieces. Now for this ball, I wanted the center to be a different color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark a space about an inch wide along the middle of the ball, and I'm just going to make marks with my Sharpie. So I'm gonna start at the top with that natural nautical rope and I just wanna start the same way we did with the other rope, wrapping it around in a circle and then pressing it in place with that silicone spatula as you go. Now once you get down to that first marking, we're gonna seal the end of that first rope and then start with our cotton rope at the end of that. So we're just gonna hot glue and press that into place as well. And we're gonna continue to wrap this around until we get about four rounds for that inch wide area. Now you always wanna start and stop where in alignment with that first piece. So then once we finish that piece of rope, add that second piece of your natural uh, nautical rope. And then we wanna continue this all the way down to the bottom. And of course, when we get to the bottom, add that last little piece of hot glue in there. And we wanna make sure we press that in there really good and make sure it's sealed. And now we have our second decorated ball. Now for the third one, we are gonna combine both strands. We're gonna combine one strand of the cotton and one strand of the tan twine rope. And again, just starting at the top and starting to wrap around in that circular pattern. Now you just wanna add it in little small sections, pressing it along as you go. And as you can see, it is forming a little swirl. You do wanna make sure your rope doesn't get twisted. And then once you get to the end, just go ahead and add that hot glue, press it in there, get it nice and sealed. And we have our third and final piece. Now I really love how these are turning out. And here are all of my twine balls on display and I think they turned out really great. Now I have mine sitting on top of an eight inch wreath from our previous DIY, but you can place them in a bowl or a tray too. Now I love all of these textures in these, especially the savings. I mean, these can be quite expensive in the stores. You guys have to let me know 
how would you display these decorated twine balls in your home? Now this project is for a set of succulent pots. So we're gonna need five, a five pack of these St. Patrick's Day cauldrons from the Dollar Tree. So go ahead and open those and separate them from the package. And then once they're all out, we wanna cut off those little handles. Now they're easy to pull out, but I recommend that you cut them so you don't damage the top part of your cauldron pots. So now we're gonna apply a layer of primer and I'm gonna use my Zinsert 123 for the outside of my pots. And here they are all dried and ready to go. So I'm gonna take some of that leftover paint mix and then I'm going to come to put some tape around my pots on what on how I wanna um, design them. Now I wanted a halfway painted up design on some of my pots. So I'm taking some painter's tape and putting it around there. Now, sometimes for my round projects, I do use electrical tape, but since this is a pre-painted surface, I decided to go with painter's tape to be safe. So I'm just gonna add some of that paint mixture around the bottom half of the pots. And as you can see, it is creating that beautiful texture. Now for the second pot, we're gonna do the same thing. And for this one, we're gonna put that painter's tape just a little lower because we will be painting the top of the pots. So again, I'm gonna apply that paint mixture along the top of the pots. You wanna make sure that you do overlap the tape to make sure you get a nice crisp um, edge and you wanna make sure you get at that top edge really well. Now for this third pot, I'm just going to cover the entire pot. I think it would look so cute to have a solid cement looking pot. So I covered this entire one. Now for the remaining two pots, you can do however you like. I'm gonna repeat this process for the other two using these same methods. So now that they're all painted, I'm just gonna sit them to completely dry. So now that they are dry, you can go ahead and remove all of that painter's tape and you can see that it leaves a nice crisp edge and it doesn't damage our primed paint surface. So here are all three of the pots with the halfway design. Now to highlight these, um, I'm just going to go ahead and use, first of all, I'm gonna use this white acrylic paint to paint the white surfaces of my pots. This is just a primer, so we wanna put an acrylic coat or a solid coat on top of that to make sure it looks nice and neat. And then for the other pots that are solid and have that gray portion on them, I'm just gonna dust them lightly with a chip brush with some of that white acrylic paint to give them that weathered look and let that texture stand out. So now that they're all dry, we can go ahead and decorate the pots. Now I have an assortment of succulents and I also have some of these river rocks that I got from the Dollar Tree that I just put in a big bag. I'm just gonna put some of these river rocks in each one of my little pots and then I'm gonna decorate each one of them with a succulent and I got these from the Dollar Tree. And here they are looking cute as ever and I think that these turned out so adorable. Now you can easily see the unique te textures in each pot and you would never know that these were cheap plastic cauldron pots. Now I have these displayed on a Dollar Tree crate shelf from a previous DIY and they fit perfectly. Now no matter how you choose to display them, they make a great way to add color and dimension to your space. Now this project is a set of modern vases. Now I'm gonna use two vases from the Dollar Tree for this project in different sizes. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and first of all, go ahead and prime it with a coat of my Zenser 123. Now once that dries, this is what they will look like. Now for this, I do wanna put a kind of diagonal line across the vase to give it a nice modern, fresh look. So again, I'm taking some of my painter's tape and I'm making that line. Now it may be a little bit challenging to make it curve a little bit and you may get wrinkles in the tape, but trust me, it does work well. You just have to be patient. And so I'm just gonna wrap it around in a little diagonal. And I wanna make sure that the ends meet up in like a V at the very end. And you wanna make sure that that connection is nice and even. Now you wanna go ahead and repeat this for your second vase as well. Now, if it does not quite meet up, you can always tear it and reapply it. It's really easy to work with and it doesn't damage your painted surface.
So now I'm going to go ahead and take that paint, give it a good mix because this is the third project. So it's probably been sitting out a while. So you want to give it a good mix to make sure everything is good to go. I'm going to take my chip brush and I am going to apply that paint along the bottom half of each one of my vases. And as you can see, it is forming that beautiful texture. I am actually really loving this as it's coming along. It really looks like a textured cement. Now you want to repeat this for your other vase as well, and then you want to let these sit to completely dry. So here are both of my vases, they have completely dried, and we want to carefully remove that tape, revealing that nice crisp line. And here are both of my vases ready to go. So of course we're gonna go in with our white acrylic paint and we're gonna first paint the white surfaces, give it a nice good coat. And you just wanna make sure that your strokes are nice and even and you wanna be careful along the line where your cement look and your white look comes to meet. Just be careful with your brush and just put a nice even layer on there. And you want to repeat this for your second base as well until both of them are covered. And then finally, you want to go in with that chip brush and highlight all of that texture again very lightly with your white acrylic paint. And you want to allow them to completely dry. Now that my vases are all dry, you can decorate them however you like them. Now I found these plants at Walmart for 97 cents. I really loved how they look and I just put one in each one of the vases. And here you have it, my two beautiful vases on display and I absolutely love it. Now I'm really loving this greenery as well paired with these vases. And we have so much beautiful texture here on these and I love how they turned out. Now, it's always so hard to choose a favorite, but let me know in the comments which one of these projects was your favorite today. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest for the latest new sneak peeks and giveaways. Now, if you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below or just click on my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and make sure you hit the bell to be notified when the next DIY goes live. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.